Hello, welcome to Nito Bito Knitting Podcast Episode 3. My name is Anne and I live in Osaka, Japan with my husband John and my cat Crayon. Yeah, welcome to this space. This space is all about knitting and sometimes I'll talk about uh, my livelihood here in Japan. Um, first of all, thank you very much for coming to my spring update and I'm very happy to see the reception that I've gotten for this update. Um, I hope that I can continue to make more new colorways, interesting colorways for the upcoming uh, updates. Um, I plan to have my next update in May, which is also my first anniversary, my first uh, handbag yarn business anniversary. So it's very exciting and uh, I'm, I'm trying to think of something exciting to do to give back to the community, to my customers. Um, and I've also reached uh, 2,000 followers on Instagram. Thank you very, very much. I'm so happy. I don't know how I managed to get that far. So there are 2,000 people who are interested in what I post on Instagram. I mean, that is quite insane. I hope my feed will bring you some inspiration or make your day a bit happier in some ways. I, yeah, thank you very much. Mm, what else? Let me see. Oh yeah, I've also gotten a few new subscribers on YouTube. Uh, I'm very happy that you guys uh, are watching this, watching what I do, watching what I do, what, what I, I like to do and telling you my stories and my yarns and things like that. Thank you very much and thank you for your lovely comments. I mean, these kind of comments is to prove that I'm just I'm not just talking to the camera alone. So yeah, thank you so much. <laughs> okay, uh, right. Let's start with uh, my FOs. Okay, this FO is actually I have not shown this in my previous um. Uh, podcast because I did it on a whim. It's actually this is this is called the Haramaki Boshi, which I, I I'm knitting for my friend's sister. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll talk a bit more about this project, but uh, I want to talk about my friend's sister who is recently dis- diagnosed with breast cancer stage two. So it is it's not the first time I it's not the first time that I known someone who has cancer but I feel quite close to her. I'm not that close to her actually but I feel that because our age is quite close to each other. She's only 3 years older than me. And I felt that I felt quite disturbed to know that someone that I know so young is uh, has breast cancer and my friend told me a lot of horror stories about how her insurance company is not paying out because stage 2 is considered not like you're not dying dying yet means you have still you still have a chance to live so they they said that because you still have a chance to live we are not going to pay you yeah insurance companies <sighs> anyway, so her, her news got me thinking that her news just got me quite disturbed and I felt that I, I want to do something to cheer her up. So I thought of making this for her. Oh, and she just gone through chemotherapy. So her hair is falling off. So she decided to shave it shave it so I thought of making this haramaki 
so that she can use it uh, as a headscarf or as a cap or as a beanie or whatever that she wants to use it for. Uh, maybe it could help her to keep her warm in some ways. Um, yeah, this is this is just a long tube of uh, stockiness stitch, but it's it's actually quite useful. I've seen some pictures of people utilizing this in many many ways. One of the ways that I can show you here is if you hold it in the middle and then you twist it like this and fold it into half Oof. Oof. like this and you can wear it like a Oof. beanie yeah like this this is one way this is actually my third haramaki that I've made the third haramaki I've made the first one I made for a friend's uh, birthday and farewell for farewell yeah because he is quite a close friend of mine when I was studying in the Osaka Japanese school when I attended that time and he stayed for maybe one year plus he was from Chile uh, he stayed here for one year plus and we got quite close uh, me, him and John used to play board games together so when he went back to his home country I decided to make him a gift so I made a haramaki uh, boshi for him so that he can use it whenever he wants um, yeah and it's, it's so versatile so I thought that you, you can just wear it whenever you want uh, the second one I made for John because he was a bit <laughs> He was a bit jealous <laughs> that I made one for my friend uh, Jose and not him. So he's he was hinting that mm, I want one too. So I made one for him and he has been using it quite frequently. Just that the pro the problem was um I was using the uh, opal opal uh, sock yarn and he was complaining that sometimes when it's uh, a bit hotter it, or a bit warmer he get itches he, he get rashes at, at the neck so the next cow that i would want to make for him would be something softer but ah and because i was thinking in malaysia it's also quite warm so i thought of using a different yarn um, yeah, I'll talk about the yarn later. So that was the first way you can wear this. And then the second way, of course, is just like a normal uh, cow like this. Yeah, I haven't blocked it yet. Maybe after blocking, it will look a bit looser. Now it's a bit tight, I think. And I got gauge for these two. Anyway. Yeah, so, so this is the second way. Um, the third way is just pull it over like this as a head scarf. Like this. So if you want to, you can just pull your hair and put it underneath. It might be a bit loose, but I think it will still work. Yeah. So because my friend, um, my friend's sister, her name is Ruby. Uh, since she shaved her head, probably she would want to wear it like this to cover a bit. Yeah. I've seen some people. Um, Twisting it in some way and made it into a hairband. I don't know how to do it, but yeah. So these are the three ways that I know how to use the Haramaki Boshi. If you have any ideas on how to use this, please let me know and I'll I'll tell my I'll tell I'll tell Ruby on how she can utilize this Haramaki Boshi. About the yarn, I use uh, the recommended yarn was uh, opal, uh, opal yarn. It's a sock yarn. It's quite popular here. 
the first two haramaki that I did was in opal yarns uh, but this one because uh, it's supposed to be used in Malaysia which is where it's a very hot and very warm country so I decided to use a little bit uh, lesser in wool but I don't have non-wool uh, yarns in, in my inventory um, so I thought of using the least wool as possible in a yarn and uh, the least wool that I have was 85% 85 merino wool and 15 nylon but I managed to dig uh, a test test yarn that I did a long time ago, about a year ago for for my first launch which is this colorway and I tested this on an 80, 80 merino 20 nylon uh, base so I thought maybe this is a good choice too so I combined the bottom which is 85 15 and the top which is 20 uh, 18 20 yarn base i did it in dk weight which i held double uh, two strands of yarn when i need um, so that is faster for me to complete and so that i can send it faster back home i don't know how long it will take i hope not too long um, two months ago when i sent back postcards uh, new year postcards back home some did not receive, some received after four to six weeks. It's crazy. But this time I'm going to send by, um, what's it called? International e-packet, e which is the service that I normally use to send yarns overseas to my customers. I'm gonna use that instead. And I hope that she'll get within two weeks, I hope. Um, yeah. Uh, what did I want to say? Ah, yes. So if you see the whole project is split into two. In fact, the original Haramaki Boshi is supposed to be really middle 50% and 50% of different type of yarn. But I don't have enough of these fake yarns. So I, I switch it up a bit. Um, the, the top part, this fade, was actually uh, four, consists of four different skin which I was uh, experimenting for a fade uh, collection but it didn't go through because I wasn't too happy with the result uh, I just feel that it's lacking something, I'm not sure what so I did not release it in the end but making a fate set or making fate collection it has always been on my mind but maybe just not now uh, so I'll work on it later when I, when I have more plans for it but so far I don't have any plans for this yet okay then um, this colorway is actually the base uh, or the experimented base for feeling good colorway in my shop. Uh, when I at that time when I saw this, I didn't really really like the result. That's why I changed it up a bit uh, in the in in the uh, feeling good yarn in the end which has more speckles and more strong uh, red color speckles this has very light uh, smooth blend of speckles if you can see yeah these are softer but now that i see it i quite like it as well so I'm not sure what I want to do with it. In fact, I don't really have the recipe for this anymore. <laughs> ah. Anyway, yeah, I think it'll make quite a nice um, color for summer, right? 
so happy color and yellow is also uh, Ruby's favorite color so that's why I was trying to find a good yellow color that I can send to her I was actually thinking of using my new colorway Ray but I only have a uh, merino, 100% merino wool left and it's in singles so I don't think it's suitable for her especially in the Malaysian climate that's why I choose this instead I hope it's of use yeah mm. oh yeah I need to remember myself to block this okay this is my first FO I, 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 only, I only have one FO sorry <laughs> I'm drinking tea it's called the uh, Damask Rose Tea it's really nice I'll show you the packaging later it's even nicer okay next my WIP Okay, I have done a bit, a few rows on the Venetia shawl. Uh, let me show you. I, I, I found that gap that I stopped. Hang on. Oh, yeah. Ah! If you can see, there's a gap here. And from this gap, this this is the this is my progress. So I've passed the midpoint and now I'm beginning to decrease my stitches. So I guess it should be done quite soon. Oh, I really love this colorway. This is one of my favorite and it's still my favorite. It's in Spark Joy. I hope my friend, my best friend, one of my best friends who is going to receive this is going to love it as well uh, yeah I hope I can complete this by May send it out by at, at the beginning of May so that she can receive it by June because her birthday is on the 3rd of June mm. Okay. okay, my second WIP is a disaster because just yesterday I found out that my gauge was wrong. I do not know what happened to me. So I was I was knitting this the Myrta cardigan and I have knitted until I almost finish one skin so this is my progress quite a lot right and then it just real I just realized that hmm it looks kind of small for my size and I thought maybe it just hasn't uh, finished uh, increase yet I haven't finished increasing yet but I finally reached to the point that I have to separate the sleeve and the body that is when I found out that hey it, it still looks kind of small then I checked back the gauge with my gauge ruler and I found out that I I was about seven stitches small seven freaking stitches I don't know <laughs> I didn't know how I can make that kind of mistake and when I get my swatch and then I I check it check my swatch as well it is a bit bigger but it's still not within gauge what the heck was I thinking see where is this what the heck so even with this uh, swatch the difference was 4 stitches per 10cm so it's still quite a big difference and 
after calculating, I was thinking of okay, if 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 I calculate it and I think that I can still fit it, fit in it, I will just close one eye and proceed. So I tried to do the calculation on the sizes because I I uh, the size that I chose was really really the uh, one inch positive ease size, which is the recommended positive ease. Um, I, I don't really like my sweaters or cardigans to be too baggy because I, I'm already quite big so I want it to be more fitting <sighs> and I couldn't get my calculation right I just couldn't see how much difference in CMs that, uh, that I, I got wrong so I got my husband to help and in, in, in the end he told me that whatever that I've done now compared to the original size that I want to get uh, I'm knitting on the size L2 which is which I'm supposed to get 114 uh, cm on the bus and after calculation he told me that I would get 18 cm lesser 18 cm lesser from 114 is 96 cm no way I can fit into a 96 cm bus. <sighs> so I have to frog it. Yes, I have to frog it. But look at this. Oh my god. I, I love you so much. <sighs> it's, supposed, it's supposed to be my spring cardigan that I, I'm going to wear for my trip to Kyushu at the end of this month and now it's impossible I'm so sad yesterday when I found out I was so sad and actually I was also very frustrated at myself and this mistake I mean how can I make such a mistake this is not my first sweater or nor my first cardigan or my first garment so I shouldn't make such terrible, terrible mistake with cage. <sighs> anyway, I intend to frog it and remake, but it won't, I don't think I can make it before my trip to Kyushu this month end. So I want to make something to wear for my trip in Kyushu so I was thinking of a different uh, pattern to knit and and I decided actually I haven't decided yet but there are two two patterns that I'm interested to knit now the first one is called the Dew Sweater by Puko or as known as Hiromi Nagasawa the other one is Tantan Sweater very popular design by Yamagara or as known as Bernice Lim she's a, she's a friend of mine and uh, I bought her sweater like last year yeah and I haven't got the chance to knit it yet so I was thinking I was contemplating between these two designs because uh, they look easy for new sweater the design um the i mean not the design but the main uh pattern or the main lace part is only on the shoulder and the rest is all stockinette stockinette so i expect it to be quite a fast knit for tantan sweater is also the same but uh it's not on the shoulder but on the yoke it, there's a color work on the yoke, very simple color work and it's short sleeve so I figured I could finish it uh, quite fast too but I have not done any color work before so I'm quite scared of my tension and my uh, yeah my tension especially so I'm still thinking about this too and I'm also thinking of the yarn that I would need because if possible I do not want to dye new yarns due to time constraint uh, 
the current yarns that I have in in stock, I'm planning to use them. So what I plan was um, is either for I'm thinking on the on the uh, for deal sweater is either I'll use a merino singles with a merino lace because that pattern calls for spot weight and spot weight I think the best because I don't carry any spot weight yarn so I can only mix yarn weights to match the spot weight I can only match yarn to match the spot weight so uh, the merino single and the merino lace would make a spot weight yarn I think it should it should be that theoretically so this is the two color that I have that I could use um, yeah it will make quite an interesting color because the colors are not very uh, far from each other and this uh, vintage air has some speckles which would bring up some uh, some essence into the sweater I guess but I do not want to use two speckly yarns as well because the it would disturb the lace pattern on the shoulder another option that I have because these are all in 100% merino wool and i was thinking end of this month would be a bit warm because even now yesterday and today is getting really really not not really really but it's getting warmer uh compared to last week and even now i'm i'm wearing shorts already and i was wearing shorts to sleep yesterday with fan on yeah both me and my husband uh kind of weak to warm and hot even though we grew up in such a warm weather country yeah this is one option the other option was uh, is, is this tree <laughs> uh, yeah this this tree uh, lace with yarn uh, in the silky merino lace which I still have in stock for many months now so I figured that if no one wants them then I, I'll probably use them for myself and I could uh, I could hold three together to make a spot weight with three lace weight yarn but these are a bit too speckly I feel these two especially are very speckly this is Amabie no Megumi and this is Interstellar this one is the uh, Forest Listen to Me so I think among these three this is the most um, soft and the it would be like the base to carry these two yarns if I can choose I would prefer, I would prefer to have two uh, two yarns, two colors that are less speckly and one more speckly yarn so that it won't be too glaring I'm not sure what this three color will, <laughs> will produce so it's a bit scary as well so if I decide to unwind all these three and in the end I didn't like the result that's three skins gone and yeah it's kind of scary thinking about it but these are these are the these are only the two uh, options that I have for deal sweater actually I have still I still have one more color that I can play with but that is also full merino I don't have it with me here yeah but for that I think that is the milk tea colorway that one I can mix probably with uh, brandy which is the merino lace that will give me a uh, that will give me quite a big difference because that 
color is a very soft uh, milk tea kind of color with this one it will if you mix it together it will produce quite a glaring type of uh, yarn uh, fabric result I think so that what that's why I wasn't thinking of that combination yeah but if I were to proceed with tan tan sweater I think I'll need to dye new yarns uh, sock base yarn because they because it's in fingering weight and I'm not comfortable with using just the merino single as my base I normally would uh, match my merino single with mohair or, or another any other strand of yarn to give it more strength um, for the tan tan sweater because it's just uh, fingering weight it's just it, it calls just for one strand of fingering weight yarn uh, I don't have any sock base color in my inventory now so if I were to use a sock base yarn for that project I will need to dye new yarns I do have a couple of uh, mini skins that I could uh, match it with for the yoke color work but my main problem would be the the base the, the, the sock base yarn so I'm still quite uh, troubled with what I should do next and I need to decide fast it's already what it's already 4th of April I only have less than 3 weeks I'm going to Kyushu on the 23rd I think so I only have 19 days to work <sighs> ah scary okay I need to decide by today Okay, so what else? Um, not yet a WIP yet, but I, I, I'm going to work on a new shawl. Uh, Luca, Luca shawl by Jared Flood. Uh, yeah, I think yes, yes, Luca. Yeah, it has. I I just fell in love with the the pattern last year when I first saw it but it was too intimidating it looks so huge it's a pie shawl and it has very intricate uh, design lace design I was quite uh, uh, <laughs> scared to work on but this this year I, I want to take up the challenge so I want to start to knit that um, design so these are the two skin of yarn that uh, that I that I'm experimenting on uh, not the base but the color the base is uh, Aska lace and the color is a bit of a gray and a blue combination with a bit of green uh, I'm gonna name it Nimbus like the the cloud um, yeah it's still in experimenting so I want to use this and knit it up and see how it looks if I like it I'll proceed with this as it is and with that because I don't have a 4.5 needle wait where's my needle I don't have a 4. Point five needle so next I want to talk about my acquisition so this is what I I bought the other day for the Luca uh, project this are uh, uh, Chiaogu needles which I've heard so many good reviews on other people's podcasts so I decided to buy one and try it out for myself this is my first pair of Chiaogu's uh, I have I have always tried to stay away from uh, steel, stainless steel needles because I, I'm scared that they would uh, be too slippery especially on lace project if drop one stitch I think I'll die <sighs> or oh, I'll just abandon the project I don't know I have not tried this yet but um, I'm also using the 
uh, what's it called again? Neat Pro, Neat Pro, Neat Pro's uh, needles, which is also steel. But I find that they are a bit more grippy than the normal steel needles. That's why I continue to use them. And I normally don't use them on lace, I think. So I, for lace, I'll use either bamboo or wood. Uh, my go-to needles are Leica. Luca, Luca, I think Luca. Eh, wait, I forgot how to pronounce it. Luca. I think it's also called Luca. <laughs> okay, because I I I'm quite particular about names and how to pronounce pronounce them, and I think I I think they are called Luca. The the needles, and I I really love them because even though they are wood. They have a really nice finish and I have been using them for a few of my projects and I've been buying them uh, separately. I I don't really I have not really thought of buying the uh the interchangeable set. One reason is because I didn't like the connector, this this connector, but because they share the same cords as uh Knit Pro. And I have used some knit pros, and I didn't like how they connect to the to the needles. I feel it's a bit snaggy, so I I thought of just uh, getting the uh, what the the circular the the usual circular needles. So that was what I've been using so far, and because of um, a lot of. Uh, recommendations for chow gu i decided to try it. and the the main reason why i want to use chow gu is because the, they said that the cord is very flexible and no matter how you twist and turn it you will just you will go back to its original shape which to me is very uh important because I have a few projects that I work on previously, especially in the round, and the 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 cords are just so annoying because I, I always have to twist them to get them back in shape, and they always do not get back in shape for some reason. So it was quite annoying. So I want to try this, and if this is good, I'll continue to buy this. But I'm still quite worried about the slippery side of things. So let's see how I'll be using this for Luca, the shawl. Okay, next acquisition. Oh yeah, I want to tell you about where I got these Chiaogu needles. In fact, I couldn't really find much suppliers or distributors who sell uh, Chagu needles. So uh, this is this is where I got them from. It's called Chickadee Yarns, and they are based in Kanagawa, I think. Uh, but I bought it from their sh online shop, and they got it. They got it sent in a few days. So I think they're pretty good. Uh, yeah, I think they are the first or the only shop that I've seen Chagu. Excuse me. So the next time if I want to buy Chagu again, I'll probably go back to their shop. Yeah. Another needles that I I, I bought the other day but I'm not gonna show you because I haven't used it yet is Haya Haya I've also heard a lot of good reviews on Haya Haya but again they are also steel needles I think they have a bamboo version but because I prefer the blue color cord so I bought the stainless steel one ah. what is the this, there's a saying, form over function, form over function. Yeah, yeah, form over function. So I'm, I'm, I'm really the form over function person. So, 
Okay, next, 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 next. Okay, last week I went to Kyoto for Hanami and I went to Amirisu because I have to go to Amirisu because I, go, I went to Tokyo and I got myself some things. I mean, how can you go into a yarn shop and not buy something, right? So there are so many selections and I couldn't, I couldn't I couldn't decide on what to buy and I'm also on a budget and on a yarn diet thingy so I just managed to buy uh, one skin of yarn and I really love the packaging so I have not opened the packaging until today which I want to show everyone uh, okay so let me open it now little squirrel yay and it just dawned to me the other day when I bought uh, another piece of uh, accessory from them which is a badge, a pin badge in a form of squirrel and I thought okay squirrel is risu in Japanese and it just dawned to me that time that ami risu means a knitting squirrel <sighs> that's why So I, this is the yarn that I bought, it's from Pearl Soho in line weight, 100% merino wool. I really really love how it feels on my hand, so freaking squishy, squishy, ah, so squishy. Um, it's 100 grams, 494 yards, I'm not sure how is it, how, how much is it in meters I think it should be 450 um, okay and it need it needs 28 to 40, 34 stitches for every four inches which is 10 cm that one I know and uses and recommended needle size US size one to four the color is uh, heifer 2047. But it also says that it's field stone grey. So I'm not sure which colour is it. Is it heather or is it field stone grey? But it is a really beautiful, beautiful grey. I'm not sure what am I going to do with it. Maybe I'll go back and get another another same grey to work on. Ah, oh my god. I think it's single ply. Yeah, it's a it's a single ply yarn. It's not really it's not high twisted, so it's it feels very nice on the hand. But I think it's also not very flimsy. It, it doesn't feel very flimsy. But as with any other um, singles, I think they will peel if you wear it as a garment so probably this will become a, as an accessory yeah, shawl or hat mm, yummy the okay I, I was I, I mentioned about the squirrel badge that I got but I think it is hiding away from me I couldn't find it <laughs> So I couldn't show it today, but I'll show it next time uh, when I manage to find it or when, when it managed to unhide from me. Then at the same time, I bought uh, the Euclidean uh, wash in lavender. This is going to be used for my shocks yarn. This is my go-to uh, scent for my uh, whenever I, I use it for for my yarn dyeing process um, this is the, the bigger bottle and um, because I was I, I, I'm shopping in Amerisu I thought of just getting one bottle from them instead of buying online and I have to pay for shipment as well so I just got it off the rack from their shop and this is in the lavender scent. I've been using this scent uh, for the past few updates. 
uh, but from the on the previous update I was using the jasmine scent it is slightly stronger than lavender but I like I really like the the scent but they don't have the jasmine or any other uh, scent in the shop at that time so this this, this was the only bottle that I have I mean the only scent that I have, that I have so I just got this instead uh, yeah so I use this during when I'm uh, in the process of after dyeing and soaking so I use it to soak before I send I I, I rinse them and uh, dry them on the rack so I really love this but I, I, I'm using another another brand called soak for my own use uh, I, I don't find any difference in both of, in these two in terms of quality but it's the scent that is different and I prefer this the scent from Eucalyptus more hmm. okay what else okay the, the next few uh, acquis acquisitions that I would like to show are not really yarn or knitting related but I just find them very interesting so I would like to share with you uh, from Kyoto also, I bought these two masks. This is for my mom. She loves green, the really strong type of green. And uh, I showed her my this this the same the same uh, brand of mask uh, previously, and she really liked it. So I thought of getting her a, a, a new one. Uh, in this color so you can see this is one side this is the other it's a bit different but when you wear it it is it's quite pretty and this is for myself so the, the prints are all very uh, Japanese style of flowers and prints and designs so it really it, it makes a pretty good gift for friends I think and it's not very expensive it costs 660 yen before tax hmm. these are the two ones size L they have size M and L this is a uh, size M the size L will give you more coverage I uh, maybe I should have got that instead but I felt uh, this is also quite enough already maybe size I would be too loose mm. the thing is I don't really like this type of uh, this this type of um, what is it called I don't know what is it called ear hanging thingy because sometimes if you wear it too long you will I, I will feel a bit pain at the back of my ear uh, there's one type which is uh, cloth and it's, it's like one piece of cloth that you can just wear it over your ear and they don't really hurt as much so I would prefer that but I don't think that it's, it's feasible to put it in this type of uh, mask hmm. then 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 ah yeah, I was talking about the the tea I was drinking just now. Hang on. The tea is called the Damask Rose Tea. Yeah, it's by Lupis Lupicia or Lupicia. Lupicia. The, the, the brand name is Lupicia. I think that's how they pronounce. Uh, it's very light and I like it because it doesn't have the bitter type of uh, aftertaste in most tea and I really really love the fragrance the, the damask rose fragrance is also very light not the very pungent type <sighs> so in love 
this is my first time uh, trying this tea because it's recommended by my friend uh, and uh, I don't find it in a lot of places this is the second first or second first shop that I've seen there's also there's also one I bought this in um, Lala Port opposite Bambaku Koen um, they also have another shop in Lukwa Umeda uh, of course the one in Lukwa Umeda is closer to me it takes about one and a half hours for me to go to Bamaku Koen. So if not for any um, important or occasions, I wouldn't be going there for shopping. Uh, yeah, so if uh, the next time I want to buy this tea, I'll be buying from Lukua Umeda. Then, I would like to show you this this is a Muji blend of essential oil called Odekake Odekake Brando um, in English it's called traveling and it is what I'm using in my uh, aroma diffuser uh, I bought it at the Lala Pot as well because my essential oil uh, ran out the other day. Um, this is a very light uh, scent that I liked, but I also I was actually looking for the scent that I was using the in the previous podcast, but I couldn't find any more. Even when I check it online in their stores, it's not there anymore. So I'm not sure if it's already discount. <sighs> but this is quite nice as well and uh, when I was trying the smell test in store it wasn't so nice it was a bit pungent but I think it's because I smell it directly from the from the bottle itself when you put it in the aroma, aroma dispenser uh, it's, it smells lighter and more refreshing um, I believe it's meant for special occasion or I don't know why because they have these sections uh, and when they put these uh, essential oils like one part like four to five uh, fragrance is for work where I, I think because they they have these kind of uh, ingredients that that's clear your mind or something like that and then there's this uh, section for special occasion and some sections for something else and uh, this is this belongs to a special occasion i don't know why maybe traveling is a special occasion and my <laughs> my husband was giving me some very weird type of suggestion for this special occasion thing which i'm not going to share in this podcast anyway the next uh acquisition okay this okay you can say that it's kind of acquisition but it's just a snack it's called the Romando snack by Bourbon. Bourbon. My uh, camera's battery just ran out, so I just changed the to a new battery. Yeah. So what was I saying? Ah, this uh, Romando snack. So yeah, how I got it was uh. Two weeks ago, my my husband's friend came over for board games, uh, and they brought a lot, a lot of snacks, and uh, they left some snacks over, and this is one of the snacks that they left over. It's fairly, it's a fairly common snack that you can find anywhere in all supermarkets or uh, convenience stores. Uh, but I have never tried it before so they left some at home at my place uh, after they finished their game and I tried it and I really love it so I want to recommend this to you as well yeah it's called Lu Lumonde Lumando okay uh, yeah the thing about this is in in Katagana it says Lumando but I wouldn't, I wouldn't know that it's called Romando if I read the English version, which is uh, Lumon. Lumon. I would probably read this as Lumon. 
Uh, yeah, this this. So yeah, is a uh, is like wafer, um, coated with chocolate. Very nice, kind of addictive. This is the second pack that I've bought within two weeks. <laughs> ah, okay. Okay, what else should I talk about this week? Ah, yes, I have this. I am going to uh, introduce you to a local hand dyer uh, called Pirika Yan. Right, let me show you her yarns. Okay, this. These are her yarns. Yay! Oh, so cute. I bought this from her uh, web website uh, launch in January, I think. I forgot when. But this is a really beautiful charcoal grey. It's called the Petite Bon Bonhio Aprons. I think this petite bonhio, I don't, I'm not sure how to pronounce, uh, is a bakery that uh, the dyer normally sells and uh, pay and go there. I, I'm not sure what is their relationship, but I've always seen um, Pirikayan promoting the cookies and the tea there. I've also tried the uh, pastry from there is really nice but they are quite far from me she is based in Akita which is the northern side of uh, Japan in Honshu uh, yeah this is the I bought this from her yarn, first yarn uh, launch uh, shop launch and these two are actually she did she she made this especially for me. I'm very happy because she was my swap partner in the winter what winter wishes swap <laughs> winter wishes swap swap <laughs> uh, happened last year. Uh, it was a it was a swap swap a uh, swap yarn swapping program by Jess uh, from the shop La Maseri. I, I think I, I I hope I pronounce it properly. Um, yeah, it was a it was a exchange yarn exchange program, which uh, uh, happened last year, and uh, a few of us joined um, Perika Yarn, which I've known even before then. Uh, I know her on Facebook. Uh, no, on Instagram. Um, so I've, I've always seen her feed and she's seen my feed uh, then uh, there's one more uh, in, in the group that we know each other because how it works was she was my swapping partner but I don't swap back to her means how I, I, I don't remember how is it what is it what's the term called but uh, she is supposed to send me something and I'm supposed to send someone something and that someone is supposed to send another person something so it, it goes around like that so it's not me and her pair you, you get what I, mean, what I mean right so uh, eventually uh, we found that the third person is the person that she is receiving from yeah and the 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 person is also whom I'm sending to. <laughs> so yeah, we got to know each other already. It's not so fun. It's, it's, it's a way to connect to people in, in Japan. Uh in, in the questionnaire where we where we input uh, where are we comfortable to send overseas or within the same country. Actually I put overseas. But I think in the end, um, how it, how how the because of the corona as well, the the COVID and everything, 
and uh, not every country I mean, Japan couldn't send to all of the countries, and it would probably take a lot of, lot of time, very, very long time. And um, missing packages could happen. So maybe that was why, what, uh, what uh, uh, made it so that it's only within Japan that uh, whoever um, applied within Japan would be chosen within Japan. Or within another country so we got to know each other I think I, I'm not sure if there's more than three of us in Japan but I think that it's a very nice way to know new knitters and also know local dyers uh, because I, I got this from her so before that I before that I have not bought any yarns from her and she only started selling online after I received this, I, I think, yeah, yes, 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 because uh, after she sent this in early December, I think, uh, I kept it until end of December, which is uh, near to Christmas, to open the box, because she sent such a pretty box with Christmas wrapping. It was such a waste to open just like that. I put it under my uh, Christmas tree for some time just to gaze ah, my 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 Christmas present is there. So when uh, on Boxing Day I opened and I found these two beautiful beautiful skin of yarns. Uh, with a lot of other goodies like the Akita beer. I'm not an alcoholic person or I or do I uh, drink a lot of beer but I would like to taste or try some alcoholic beverages especially is from another uh, prefecture. Uh, she sent me this uh, Akita beer which I really love. Uh, I find that it's such an honor and I, I feel very happy to get something which is very particular in that uh, from that area and things like that. Um, what else? Uh, she sent me some um, gummies, uh, some highlighters for journaling because I told her that I like to journal other than anything. Uh, I don't ah and the nail polish which is what I'm wearing now is a bit uh, cheap already but if you can see it's very cute soft uh pinkish peach color yeah uh I forgot what else but yeah the the, the box was my happy box <laughs> yeah and this uh, these days, I would like to share is uh, 75 wool and 25 nylon, 400 meters. This is the same. I really really love this color. I'm not sure what am I going to use them for. Maybe a shawl because this would make such a good pairing. Uh, yeah, this 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 base is also the same. Uh, okay, let's see. The name for this is called Chit Chat. The green the green one is called Chit Chat or Shaberi. And this uh, purple happy color is called Bring Happiness to You. Uh, I think this even the names are very well thought. So I really love them. In fact, I just want to continue to stare at them longer before I use them. And uh, Pirika Yan also uses the owl as her mascot, which I think is very cool. So cute. This yarn is wearing knitted items. See? She's, she's wearing a knitted hat and a knitted scarf. So cute! Hmm. So, yeah. I'm very happy to know another uh, knitter in Japan whom I can connect to and who is also a dyer. Hmm. I think knitting, uh, although it, it, it's a very solo type of uh, hobby I so in some ways you can also connect with people like during 
uh, knitting party or swap like this. Talking about swap, I still have one box of swap that is supposed to send in summer or summer, I think summer or May last year. But because of Corona, I couldn't send it out and it's supposed to send to Australia. I still owe her that big box. So yeah, see when I can send them out. I hope soon. So this is Pili Kayan. Do visit her. She also sent uh, overseas. Yeah, check her out. Uh, uh, I think you can... She, her website is on base. The base uh, website. But I'll link it up down below. No worries. Okay, what else I can talk about? Okay, a bit about my daily life. Um, last two weeks, two weeks plus ago, I did uh, no, not two weeks. I think last month I did a medical checkup, which I have not done in a few years. So, also because of my of Ruby's um, uh, how do I put it, Ruby's condition. That triggers me to to do a medical checkup. I got quite scared, so I went to do one. Uh, it was quite fast. It was one of the most smooth. It was the smoothest process uh, for medical checkup that I've ever done. Normally, I would have waited for many many hours uh, for each process or I mean each test to be done, but. The one that I went to was really fast and very smooth. So I, I quite I was quite happy with the process. It took me about just two hours to finish everything from blood test to eye test, uh, bone bone test, uh, mammogram, uh, and the last one which I hated, which is the the test on the on the intestines and on your on the stomach. I think it's on your stomach, not intestine. It's on the stomach, which I have to drink a cup of barium. It's it's not good for the body. It's something quite toxic. It's rather red. But you're supposed to get it out after uh, uh, of your system within that two days. That's not the point. The point is, the point was when I was uh, when I took that test, I had to drink that 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 cup of barium, and I have to burp out everything before I go into that machine, where I have to twist my body to three hundred sixty degrees a few times for it for the person to scan my body. That was difficult because every time I turn or do some actions I would burp and I can, I shouldn't do that. Every time I I I, I burp, the person uh, has to come in and tell me you shouldn't do that and she will give me another cup of drink, a carbonated sort of drink for me to get, let out uh, all my air and everything from my system before he can continue again. So I think that process took me took three or four times and I, I actually didn't felt that I burped, but he said I did. Maybe it's just small, small type, of, small, small type of uh, air that came out, which I didn't notice. Um, but it was kind of annoying, and uh, that well, it was one time I did a, I did a scanning on my stomach. I think two years ago, it was uh, putting a camera inside the from my mouth or nose I don't remember into the into the stomach and at the time I was I was given anesthetic and I, I just passed out during the whole procedure I didn't I, I wasn't conscious after, uh, until after the whole procedure was done and I thought it would be something similar but because my husband went through the same process as this barium thing before he told me that oh I didn't go through such 
uh, process you have to drink the barium thing and then you have to twist your body a few times and then for them to check I was like okay so yeah that was quite an experience and, and I really didn't like it but everything else was fine uh, it was also my first time doing the mammogram uh, thing for to check for breast cancer uh, because I thought I, I heard some really scary stories from my friends that saying they're saying that when they they push that that plates the two plates in between your breast it hurts like hell but my experience was quite okay it was fine it, would, it didn't hurt that much it's just a bit embarrassing but the person who uh, did the scanning was a lady so I, I I was quite okay with it yeah. Yeah, all in all, I really liked how the process went. It was very smooth. That was my my first impression. It was very smooth, and uh, I didn't have to wait very long for each of this process to be done. And after that, a few weeks ago, I think two weeks ago, I received my medical report. That is the uh, worrying part. Uh, okay, so how it goes was. This, this is the first time I've, I've written, I, I've, I've seen such a report as well. The report will tell you your, in your grading, you're supposed to be in what grade depends on, uh, on your result. So I got, uh, most of them are A, which is good, the max, the, the best one. But I have like three parts that are C's, which is uh, not so good and is something that uh, the uh, the grading will tell you that oh C means you have to take uh, you have to be more concerned or take care in this uh, situation of getting C so uh, long story short my C's are mainly to do with my weight and I'm not going to tell you how much I weigh I'm not going to do that but I can tell you my family history. My grandmother had uh, high blood pressure. My grandfather had uh, diabetes, and he passed away from prostate cancer. That is not really my con. That was not really my concern because I, I don't have a prostate, right? But diabetes, yes. And my father, he passed away from heart disease at the age of thirty nine, which is my age now. That's, that was also one of the reasons why I want to do this medical checkup. I was getting quite... I feel that my body is getting a bit unhealthy. Like, how do I put it? When your body... When, when, you, felt, when you felt uneasy or when you felt... Not, not mentally, not, not, uh, not emotionally, but more on the physical part. Uh, it's, a, it's a sign that your body is telling you that something is wrong. So after I got this uh, result, I, I I saw my C's, and they are all something to do with um, my weight, which is linked to uh, linked to heart disease. And sorry, my legs are a bit numb. Ow. Uh, let's see. Yeah, uh, one of the C's that I got was BMI. My BMI is off the charts. I knew that. <laughs> mm, so, but what I didn't know was my other C, which is uh, fatty liver. And the next C was. was something to do with the amount of it's something to do with fats basically it's amount to do with the amount of fats in my body so now I'm thinking of uh, going on a diet and I'm not someone I, I really don't like exercising even though my husband bought this uh, Nintendo Switch with Ring Fit and thought of uh, doing a routine for exercising at home during the corona and because going out for exercising is kind of uh, dangerous not 
in 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 the sense of coronavirus, right? Uh, so we we started using that for once or twice. I did that for like once or twice, but after that I didn't I didn't continue. Um, uh, so now I'm thinking of doing it back again. And most of all, I think I want to control my diet. Uh, uh, since getting married until now, six years, I have gained twenty kg. And since coming to Japan, I have gained uh ten kg. Um, I mean, out of the twenty kg, ten kg I gained it when during my stay in Japan. Ah, uh, I thought coming to Japan would make me. Uh, healthier and lose some weight. In the first year, I think I did. I did lose weight because I was, I went out quite a, quite a lot. Um, I have to go to the Japanese class, uh, and there's a lot of walking, right? So, I think that was what made my my. My weight. I I don't think I I lost any weight, but I get to maintain and I felt more. I felt healthier. Uh, but after that, for the past one and a half years or more, yeah. After I finish the the Japanese class course, I uh, most of the time I've I've been staying at home, and I've been a couch potato. And I've always been staring my computer sitting, so I've not done much exercising. And my input of food is still the same. I did not reduce any. And in fact, I think after coming to Japan, I I began to eat more desserts because the desserts here are really really delicious. And not only delicious, when you look at how they're displayed on the on the fridge or on the on the racks. In the in the department stores, you just want to buy them. I mean, you cannot resist. I I couldn't resist. I couldn't resist the beautiful the beauty of the sweets of the desserts of the cakes, and because my husband is actually not a not a person with sweet tooth, but he also bought them and eat together with me. So if I have his blessing, means I can go crazy with it already. And so that's what happened now. Um, so now I'm thinking of getting into a diet. Uh, I, uh, my husband already started intermittent fasting, and I asked him, "Hey, how how does it feel? And do, do you see any difference?" And then he said, "Ah,、oh, my stomach actually got smaller, and he felt healthier." And I say, "Really?" And then yeah, so I'm I'm trying that. Ah,、uh, now for about three four days, but sometimes I cheat. So I hope I can get back to the full intermittent fasting schedule. And another thing I want to try is keto keto meals. I think it's called keto meals,、um, which I have heard a lot of、uh, good reviews as well. Yeah, I'm 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 thinking of starting with diet first before going to something more extreme like exercising because I really hate that. I hate to do all all those things. But because I want to live longer, I want to be a healthy obasan. <sighs> These are some things that I have to do. Yeah. Okay, on a happier note. Uh, these few weeks, at、uh, least two weeks, I have been going for hanami in Kyoto, in Osaka, in a few places. I think I went to like four different places for hanami.、Uh, it's really, really beautiful.、Um, this year, the sakura season blooms.、Uh, the sakura blooms two weeks, about one or two weeks earlier. So、uh, now it's getting warmer,、um, and now the petals are starting to fall already. But two weeks ago was really really beautiful.、Uh, I went to Kyoto first, and then last week I went to Sakura no Miya, Tamaku Koen, and Osaka Jo.、Uh, especially Osaka Jo, it was crazy. There was a lot. There were a lot of people.、Um, in fact, the Osaka government said that we shouldn't do hanami, as in we shouldn't sit and picnic、uh, in the grounds. But everyone was doing that, including us. 
<laughs> and we brought Crayon out as well. It was his first time ever in his life, in his 15 years of life, going out to picnic. So it was also quite an, exper- uh, an ex- experience. I will try to upload some videos uh, of our Hanami sessions. Uh, yeah, I hope it's not too shaky. I will. I, I'm not too. I'm not too used of uh, using the camera and shooting videos like 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 vlogging. But I hope I will edit some and show some nice footages for you guys. Yeah, I think I talked a lot today. I think I should stop now. Okay, then. Till next time, bye bye.